still have participants joining us. Welcome everyone. So this is our first course for the new year, 2024. And uh, we are starting this part one course targeting the April exam. So thank you all for joining us today. This will be an introduction session for MRTP part one exam. And uh, I will briefly cover about the various steps of the MRCP exam, part one, part two, as well as the paces. Because as we know, part one is just the beginning of the journey. And anyone who's starting part one should have a long-term plan to clear all the parts of the exam. Because MRCP part one itself holds no value. And uh, you should have a strategy in mind so that you can clear all the parts and then only MRCP helps you advance in your career. So my name is Dr. Suman Paul. I am the assistant course director for MRCP and the study MRCP courses. We are running both, not both, we are running part one, part two and PACES course for this last one year. We have uh, various duration of the courses part one, three months course, which is what we are starting today. And you will also have a shorter part one course, which will be a six weeks course that will be starting later uh, in six weeks time. Feel free to drop in your message in the chat group if you have any questions and I'll get back to all of you also during the question answer at the end, also you can unmute yourself and uh, ask me your questions. So I'll start off now. And for the candidates who are joining us for our course, after I finish this session, we will have a IT orientation program as well, where someone from the IT team is going to take you through the learning management software. Uh, it's available both on the website as well as on the mobile app. Uh, so feel free to use whichever you are more comfortable with. Uh, mobile app is easier if you are traveling or maybe while you were working, you can just go through the MCQs on your mobile app. That's quite handy. But of course, we have the website for a much better experience. Right. So as per the standard format for study medic, we always start off with a motivational quote. And uh, the quote of the day today is to succeed, work hard, never give up, and above all, cherish a magnificent obsession. And uh, you will find this kind of motivation to be really helpful because MRCP is not uh, just a single exam. It's a process. And uh, throughout the process, you need to find the right motivation to keep you geared up for success. Now, I myself pass MRCP. Uh, it's been quite a few years since I completed PACES, but it is one of the key exams to progress in career if you're planning on training in the UK. It does have some value if you are not coming to UK, if you are working in India, yes, it holds some value, but the greatest value of MRCP is if you are planning on a career in the UK. I am currently in a UK training program. Uh, now this is my last five months of a five year training program. So I'm at the end of my training and I'll be moving towards a consultant post. But MRCP was a very, very important step in this journey. And I will be presenting 
how how it helped me progress in the career and if any of you have plans to enter uk training particularly later in your career or even if you are starting off then mrcp becomes a mandatory exam for you so there is no alternative of mrcp you need to pass mrcp only then you will move uh, in the next step of your career and for entry to higher specialty training i'll come to what how the training structure is for entry to higher specialty training mrcp is a mandatory requirement it is quite a old exam is been the royal college was founded in 16th century it is recognized worldwide as a symbol of excellence in medicine it is an essential component of training for physicians in the uk and this exam part 1 part 2 pieces all of the exams are mapped to the uk curriculum it's a very important point to understand that many of the questions that comes up in the exam you need to bear in mind that the answer needs to be applicable to uk and not the country that you are currently practicing is a very important understanding to have in your mind because this could be the the game changer between a correct answer and an answer that you are choosing because medicine though it's universal but there are certain variations and we need to be very very clear that when you are marking an answer in the exam that should be correct as per uk practice of medicine and this is what we'll be covering in the course as well that some answers look to be correct in the country of medicine that you are practicing but they may not be true if you are practicing medicine in the uk mrcp along with being an exam it's also an approved pathway to get medical registration in the uk so the medical council in uk is called general medical council or gmc in short and gmc recognizes completed mrcp to be a route for getting license to practice medicine so along with being an exam that helps you progress in your training it also gives you license to practice medicine in the uk the only other exam that you need to pass is an english exam which could be ielts exam or oet exam if you have an english exam plus mrcp you are uh, eligible for getting a license to practice medicine in the uk uh, in the indian context by nmc or mci previous mci mrcp being a post graduate specialty qualification of the uk it's recognized as a post graduate qualification but there are certain nuances that though is a recognized qualification does that mean that anybody who's not had any training but they have a mrcp which is a very rare situation by the way but let's say somebody theoretically has got a mrcp but no training are they eligible to practice as a consultant the answer is no because no hospital is going to give you a consultant post if you don't have relevant experience it's as simple as that uh but yes if you have mrcp then you have the qualifications in place but you need to back it up with uh adequate experience and recognition of mrcp exam as a requirement for entry to specialist training this is only for the uk the last point here this is only for the uk so you can't use the mrcp to enter specialist training like dm in india so for dm the eligibility criteria mentions dnb or md very specifically so mrcp is not an alternative for that so how does the training structure in medicine looks like in the uk so on the screen you can see um the first thing is the foundation your trade so there are two groups of medical specialties so many there are lots of medical specialties which have been divided into two groups group 1 and group 2 the group 1 specialties are all the broad medical specialties for example 
endocrinology, cardiology, gastroenterology, respiratory medicine, neurology. So this group on specialties, they have combined second CCT in general medicine. So you get a general medicine CCT plus a particular specialty, also CCT. So you get two CCT, dual CCT. So that's all are the broad group one specialties. There are also group two specialties, which are uh, somewhat quite uh, narrow field or niche fields. For example, hematology, dermatology, medical oncology, and also you have some um, really small niche specialties like audio vestibular medicine, space medicine, allergy medicine, all of this, uh, sports and exercise medicine. In those specialties, you don't get two CCTs. You get only one CCT in the specialty. You don't have a combined general medicine CCT. So the years of training for group two specialties are less. So I'll come to the difference. So once you are done you, with your MBBS or undergraduate qualification, in the UK, there are two years of foundation training. Now, in the Indian context, foundation year training is one year of internship plus one year of house topship. So that's two years. In India, we don't always do house topship, but in the UK, they have combined this two years and they call this foundation training. For most international medical doctors, there is a possibility of entering before the foundation year training and start FY1 year and then complete FY2 year. But most doctors who have done internship in their country will not go for FY1 year because they have already done internship. So there is a very, very small number of seats that come up for standalone FY2 post. Very few seats come out and it's very difficult for an international medical graduate to actually get into those seats. So if you can apply and get into that, that's fine. But majority doctors who come through the PLAP pathway, they will enter training after they fight too. So they will do a <clears throat> non-training job, which is equivalent to an FI2 or FI1 level. And they get an alternative certificate called the CREST form that gives them the license that they have completed competencies equivalent to foundation year training in the UK. So it's a form that can be signed by any UK consultant as well as non-UK consultants if you're uh, practicing in other country. So there are some criteria for the person who can do it. But most IMGs after PLAB will enter somewhere after the foundation year training. Then there is a selection process. So it's a national recruitment process where if somebody is interested in medicine, they will apply for internal medicine stage one training. It's a three years of training. And this selection consists of interview as well as a portfolio scoring station. So you need to work on your portfolio. There are certain scores assigned based on your CV. And once you get good marks, you clear the interview. Only then you get selected to internal medicine stage one training or IMT stage one training. If you compare this with the Indian context, in India, you complete your internship and then you do the NEET PG exam. And that's similar to the selection here. And then you enter three years of MD medicine. So IMT stage one is three years. Similarly, MD medicine or DNB, they're all three years. So if you're training in the India, then your pathway of higher specialty training before you come to UK is almost similar. Both in UK as well as in India, you have a three year internal medicine training. You were meant to pass the MRKP exam during these three years of training. So either you are in IMT training or you are in MD, DNB training, you are meant to pass the MRZP exam during these three years. 
So this exam is aimed at someone who's already in training for general medicine or internal medicine and have decent years of experience. It could be between one to three years. So they are not complete freshers. They have experience in medicine and only then they are eligible for this MRCP UK exam. But the eligibility, if you look at the website for part one exam is, you just need 12 months experience post MBBS. So if you consider the 12 months internship, if you completed that after MBBS, you are eligible for MRCP part one exam. But part one exam, as I said at the beginning, is not the only thing because MRCP part one holds no value. So you need to prepare and plan for the whole MRCP UK, all the three exams. And you need to have a backup clinical experience so that you can justify going for the MRCP UK exam. Then once you complete this anti stage one training, or let's say in India, MD, DNP training, there is another selection. So this selection in the Indian context is the DM entrance exam. In the UK context, this is another national recruitment which has similar interview and a portfolio scoring station. If you clear this, you enter higher specialty training. This could be cardiology, gastro, endocrine, respiratory, and so on and so forth. And it's a dual CCT, it's a four year of training. In India, DM is three years of training. So here, this is one year extra. During this four year, you have to pass an exam called SCE exam. Usually you take the exam during ST5, ST6 stage. It's an, usually an, it's an MCQ exam for all of us. Certain specialties like cardio, gastro, they don't call it SC. They combine this like SC exam with the European exam. But the idea is the same. It's a one-off exam, MCQ exam. Once you pass that and you complete your training, then you become a, a specialist in the UK or a CCT holder. Now, many doctors, someone like me, I didn't do internal medicine stage one training in the UK, but I entered training at this stage, at the later stage. I did MD from India, but I entered high specialty training in the UK. So this is the second half of the training or the high specialty training. That's what I did. That will give me CCT. Uh, but MRCP was a mandatory exam for me to appear in this selection process. Okay. So this is how MRCP fits in with your overall training structure. So why MRCP? For, for someone who's training in India or working in India, why do we need MRCP? So it is an additional foreign qualification. It does help in the job market. It does help in the private practice. Um, it helps to stand out in the private practice arena because it is quite competitive. There are so many MD doctors. So having something extra always helps. If you plan to move to the UK, then as we discussed, it's a very, very important exam. Move to other countries, except UK, the value of MRCP is not really a lot. Um, very common question, every time I do this session, I guess asked what to do to go to Gulf countries. <laughs> so this is from the DHA, Dubai Health Authority website for the, how they value these exams and these degrees. So they have divided all the qualifications into tier one, tier two, and tier three status. So tier three, MD, MS, DNB, these are all tier three. Tier three qualifications means that you cannot come and work there as a consultant, but if you have those qualifications and you have some experience, so they usually want certain two to three years of experience, based on the job they want, they, you, they will allow you to apply. So you have MD plus three years of experience, then you will be eligible to work there as a specialist. So tier three is MD, MS, DNB. DMMCH is tier two. Now tier two again, 
is not eligible to become a consultant in Gulf countries. But you can work there as a post, something called specialist. But in any none of the Indian qualifications are recognized as a tier one qualification. But if you have CCT, like Certificate of Completion of Training from UK, or previously it used to call CCST, if you have these degrees, then you can become a tier one and you can work as a consultant in their Gulf countries. So this is the Dubai DHA license criteria. Abu Dhabi will have their own, so uh, Saudi have their own, but the basic structure is similar. Now, tier two, if you have membership fellowship or Royal College, like MRCP, but mark this, MRCS is not included in this kind of uh, tier two qualification. So MRCS has been downgraded, but MRCP still has a value. So exam-based membership or fellowship or Royal Colleges will give you tier three, but annual, if you have a specialist registration by the GMC plus membership fellowship, then you get a tier two. So this is if you have tra done training in the UK. A CCT will give you a tier one qualification. So MRCP itself, if you don't have MDMS, then yes, it will give you a tier three qualification. But if you have MDMS, then if you and you have the experience, then you can go and work in the Gulf as a tier three qualification. MDMS is enough or DNP MDMS is enough. You don't need MRCP on top. But having MRCP, if you don't have MRC, MDMS, is really helpful because that will make it a tier three qualification. It is a costly exam. So international exam centers, they charge a lot more money than UK exam. So it's around 600 pounds for India part one, part two. And PCS exam is 1200 pound. And in the UK is slightly cheaper. It's 460 pounds and 657 pounds. Part one is a one day exam and you have two three hour papers. Each paper will have 100 MCQs. Uh, there are no images involved in part one exam. So you won't be given images of clinical scenarios, uh, histopathology slides, ECG, X-ray. So no images are given in part one exam. Uh, this is the distribution as per the topics. And we follow this kind of uh, mark distribution while designing our MRCP course. So any of the topics where you can see you have like 14 or 25 marks, we do a full two hour session on them. But the smaller topics, for example, oncology, just five questions, medical ophthalmology, just four questions, palliative, just four questions. We combine all these smaller topics into uh, we usually take two or three of the smaller topics and then make a whole day of teaching. So we don't spend too much time on topics which doesn't have too much marks. We'd rather spend more time, time on renal medicine, respiratory medicine, rheumatology, because they carry more marks. And that's how we do our three months course as well. <laughs> so how difficult is this exam and how, how popular is this exam? A very important thing to note is two and a half thousand exam candidates that the part one exam. UK trainees was only 300. Most of them were not in UK training. Uh, and more people were sitting the exam in international centers, around 55% in international, and UK centers only 44%. So majority, this is the data from part one exam. So a majority of the candidates were actually not in UK and not in UK training who are appearing for the part one exam. Uh, pass rates, UK center pass rate is around 57%, whereas international center is around 48, 49%. So the pass rates are higher in the UK. How do you prepare for the exam? Um, main thing that you need is question banks because it's an MCQ exam. So we always advise for retrospective study. That is, you do the question first, 
and then go back and study the topic. This will help you cover the syllabus quickly. Like for example, in two, three months time, if you want to cover the whole syllabus, it's best to go retrospective. And it will be a more smart study. So if you focus on the MCQs, focus on the commonly repeated topics, and then try to get a grasp of those topics, it's a more smart strategy for studying and you will score more marks if you do this properly. MCQ banks are available in online question banks. If you are enrolling in our course, we have a lot of questions in our MCQ bank. So you will be able to practice a lot, thousands of MCQs if you just go by the question bank that you have. Books, you don't need to study the textbooks of medicine that you did in your medical school like Davidson, Harrison, you don't need to study those books. But if you just want to study one book, we recommend the Philip Calvara textbook of uh, MRC Pete. Uh, it's a book that is specifically written for MRCP exam. Uh, it also helps you with both part one and part two exam. So it's, it gives you a good structure in your preparation. So if, it, if, you, if you just do that particular book, and then, of course, do a lot of MCUs. That's good enough for you to pass the exam. The preparation time is three to six months, but three months intense study is good enough for passing. Now, just a bit about the part two exam. It's also an MCQ exam, but the question standards are different. They will ask you about how to prioritize diagnostic or problem list. They will ask about how to plan investigations. So let's say for a disease, you have two different investigations. They are both important. But in part two exam, they will ask which is more important. They will help you. They will ask you questions about selecting a plan for immediate management and selecting a plan for long-term management of the condition. So let's say you have a patient of myocardial infarction. They will ask you questions about which are the immediate management and which are the long-term management. And the questions will be structured around your understanding of this kind of small nuances and also about prognosis of the disease. So the topics of part two are similar, but the standard of the questions are different. It's a two paper taken on one day. Papers last three hours, 100 MCQ per paper, similar to part one is 100 MCQ per paper. But the difference from part one is here you will have questions with images. So you will be given images of chest X-ray, CT scan, uh, histopathology slides, microbiology slides, uh, maybe some dermatological condition. So images are very important. So you get a lot of questions on, with images. Distribution of the marks, almost similar to part one, but the difference is you don't have a basic science. In part one, basic science carry a lot of marks. Part two, it's all pure internal medicine. There is no basic science. And uh, also like you have psychiatry, only three marks, three questions. Ophthalmology, only three questions. So it's a mix of broad and the smaller specialties. And we follow this structure in our MRCV part two course. Now, this is the important number that you should, see, you should see. So if you remember part one exam, we had around two and a half thousand students. Whereas in part two, that two and a half thousand had come down to 1700. So you can see that there's a lot of students who sit for part one exam, but they don't proceed to part two exam. And the, the reason I'm showing this is we don't want you to be one of those students who stop at part one exam. Because as I say, part one exam has no value on its own. It's only helpful when you have the whole MRCP exam. So people, they don't realize this and they just go for the part one exam. And after the exam, they realize that they can't proceed and they drop off. It's a waste of time, waste of money and waste of resources. So while you are starting off on your part one journey is very important to have a understanding of the bigger picture. And 
make sure that you are not one of the candidates who is going to drop out after part one exam. The pass rate for part two, again, is around 69, so 70% in UK centers, international centers around 60%. So that rate from 50% has gone up to 60%, but it is actually a difficult exam. The reason the rate is higher is the number of applicants is much less. So the number of applicants has gone down. So the percentage of passing, they, they are looking like higher. But it doesn't mean that it's an easier exam. Uh, this exams, none of the MRTP exam has a negative marking. So always answer all the questions in the exam. Pass marks usually changes exam to exam, depending on the difficulty of the exam. Um, and they use some statistical method to find out the cutoff mark for each of the exam. Usually, if you score something around 65 to 70%, you are almost certain to pass the exam. I mean, more like 70% rather than 65. Uh, different topics uh, for part two exam. So you can see that gastro and hepatology, the pass rates were lower in, this is a May 2023 exam. Uh, gastro was a difficult exam to pass. Also, neurology was a difficult exam. A palliative medicine, people didn't score a lot of marks. Now, this numbers change from exam to exam. And just because gastro was difficult here, doesn't mean it will be difficult in, in the exam that you will be taking later on in the year. Preparation is also, again, three to six months. Uh, if you are doing part two just after part one, I think three months is more reasonable estimate because there are a lot of overlap between part one and part two topics. <coughs> you, you definitely need a question bank because again, it's an MCQ exam and courses like ours are helpful to give you a more of a, a personalized approach for preparation and more intensive preparation. But what is more important is clinical experience because in part two, they will ask you questions which are not so about your knowledge, but about how you prioritize the problems in your day-to-day -day practice. So clinical experience is really helpful for part two exam. A bit about the paces, which is the practical exam. That's a half day exam. It takes place in a clinical setting. It could be a hospital. Uh, it could be a clinical skill center somewhere near your uh, near a hospital because they need patient, real patients. So mostly this is done in hospital. It assesses seven core skills. There are five stations and there are eight patient encounters. Patient's uh, structure was actually changed end of 2023. So this is a new structure. And this is an example of how the patient's exam runs. So you have station one with communication and respiratory. Station two is a consultation where you do history examination and explain the findings to the patient. Then you have station three with cardiovascular neurology each 10 minutes. Then station four is communication with abdomen. And then you have station five, that's a 20 minute of consultation. There used to be a history station that's now uh, uh, been removed. So you have two com communication stations which is a very, very important thing. And most international doctors actually fail the communication station. So it's an important thing to be aware of. Number of candidates for PACES is 1,600. So part two was 1,700, this is 1,600. So most people who go to part two exam, they will actually go for PACES as well. So by the time they have reached part two exam, they have a feel of the exam and they have a high chance that they will complete all of it. But a lot of people who go for part one exam, they don't proceed further. And in PACES, you are marked on all these skills. Like you can see uh, physical exam, identify signs, clinical communication, differential diagnosis, clinical judgment, managing patient concern, and maintaining patient welfare. And you can see that most people fail in the clinical communication. 
this bit as well as managing patient concerns not in physical science so this is where they fail <laughs> uh, percentage of pass in pieces again it goes up to uh, 60% international candidates the pass rate goes lower and overall it's around 55% pass rate for pieces you don't need to study a lot because it's a practical exam not much scope for you to present all your knowledge uh, so it's more about practice how to talk what are the phrases to use um, how to talk with the patient how to introduce yourself to the patient those are the main areas where we focus our courses so we also have uh, pieces online courses which is running now and hopefully this year within next uh, one to two months we'll have our live course as well uh, courses are very very important for paces part 1 part 2 if you don't do courses and if you just do mcq there is a chance that you could pass the exam if you study really well but for paces you definitely need courses and communication is the most difficult area to pass the exam so if you are planning to start on your mrcp journey the most important thing is to know your why why you are setting this exam so it's a three process exam it's going to take you around two to three years of your life to clear all the parts depending on how soon you take each of the parts and whether you are needing more than one attempt so if you are committing two to three years of your life to an exam you should have a good reason why you are doing it study smart so you don't really need to study 18 hours a day or like 12 hours a day for mrcp exam like we do for neat pg exams so study smart you can actually prepare for this exam and pass the exam while you have been working and that's how the most you get trainees will do the exam nobody will actually sit at home and spend 3 months studying for the exam everybody will be working full time in the hospital jobs and then going for the exam and practice is the most important for your mcqs you need to practice for your practical exam also you need to practice so this is the main thing about passing the exam now now what happens if you pass the exam so i'll give you my example that i did md in india so i already had an md to work as a specialist so how did mrcp help me personally to progress in my career now while you are doing your post graduation md ms dnb whatever you will feel that private practice is quite competitive and most people will need something extra on top in the cv to survive in the competition and that's why you need extra qualifications uh but as with any uh, qualifications mrcp gives you an opportunity to yes to practice in india but also to practice outside india in the uk so if you are someone who's looking to expand your skill set expand your employability then this becomes a very very important exam uh of course there are other challenges with leaving your hometown home country coming to a new country so those are other challenges and most people who go to a different country it could be uk it could be us uh they all face this kind of problems and it's is a part of the journey but for mrcp as we said that it helps you getting gmc registration so i did my mrcp part 1 during my first year of md training so i was working full time and anybody who know md training first year is really really cruel so you'll be working like 70 80 hours a week during that i was preparing for the exam so it's possible to work full time as well as take the mrcp exam i did my part 2 exam at the end of my md so i completed my md final exam we had around 2 3 months left before i completed my 3 years of training so there was no exam but i was just going there uh so i had a lot of time and that's when i did my mrcp part 2 and then uh i came to uk by mti route 
MTIE route is called Medical Training Initiative. That's the full form. Uh, for MTI, Royal College does the recruitment themselves, and uh, they will want MRCP Part One clear along with a postgraduate qualification. So I had MD, I had MRCP Part One, Part Two. That was really helpful for me to clear MTI. And then with MTI, I came and start working in the UK as a registrar. So I was lucky that I got this MTI op option so that I don't have to wait for the pieces exam in India because getting pieces seat is quite difficult. Most people uh, spend like two, three years or even more waiting to get a pieces seat because number of seats are quite limited. Uh, it's a practical exam, so it's very difficult to do a lot of those exams. Uh, so there is a limitation in number of exams that they can conduct. So that's why getting a seat is quite difficult. So because I came to UK, I could actually go to places quite easily. Uh, because in UK, there are lots of places centers, lots of seats are available. The cost of the exam is almost half of that in India. So I was already working in the UK and then I went for the places exam. And of course, for MTI, also I needed the English exam. IELTS was, was the exam that I did. OET was not available then, but it, it came quite easy. Uh, quite, uh, after one or two years, OET was uh, started. So most people who fail IELTS find OET easier. Now, I've never taken OET myself, but this is what many of my friends, um, that's, that was their experience, that if they failed IELTS, they went for OET, they could pass in the first attempt. Uh, now, coming to a new country, of course, there is a new system. So medicine that you practice in India is different from the medicine that is practiced in the UK because in UK, it's all government system. Everything is very protocol-based. Uh, the hospitals are very, very busy. So if you're working in medicine, you will be have a, you will have a very, very busy time in hospital. So they're crazy busy, uh, similar to any Indian hospital. Uh, and of course, you have to learn. It's a process. You keep learning. It takes around three to six months of working in a UK hospital. And then you get used to the system here. Um, and of course, then you, you have to pass your exams. The MRCP is, was important for me. I passed that. And then I applied for UK training. And then you slowly, slowly, once you enter training, everything goes on in autopilot mode. You just spend one year. There is something called ARCP here. It's an annual appraisal process. You just go for the appraisal every year. They look into your portfolio and you progress in your career. Along with medicine, you also have to learn about the visa process that keeps changing every year, um, managing your money because you are earning here and you have to figure out a way of managing your money. In, in, in India, in your home country, you have your parents to help you. You have your seniors to help you, to guide you. But here, when you are coming in a new country, of course, you need to learn about how to manage your money, how is the tax structure like. So you need to figure them out on your own. Um, and then, like many of us, like who come to UK in the in like early 30s, we all end up uh, starting our family in this country. So those are all new learning experiences. So MRCP is helpful to enter UK to progress in the UK. And of course, if you have plans of getting higher specialty training, MRCP becomes mandatory. If you just look at the statistics, if you compare the competition of a DM cardiology or DM nephrology, and if you compare the competition of doing a CCT in cardiology or nephrology in the UK, the competitions ratio are much, much easier in the UK. So if you compare the, if there are like 100 candidates for a DM seat, only one of them will get, get a chance. This is just an arbitrary number. I don't have the exact ratio with me. Whereas in the UK, the ratio is something between one is to five to one is to six. So if you are going for a cardiology, it's like one is to five candidate applicant will get a cardiology seat because the number of uh, the training posts are much higher than in India, than the number of applicants. So it's much easier to get into hospital training if you just look at the statistics of uh, applicant versus uh, the number of trainees. Um, 
Now, are you be getting CCT in next five months? And then now I'm looking for a consultant job. So the advantage and the beauty of getting a UK CCT is you can practically go and work in any part of the world except North America. So Canada and US, if you just take those countries out, every country in the Europe, uh, India, Middle East, Singapore, if you have CCT, you don't need an exam. You can get a license to practice straight away. And most countries will give you a consultant job uh, with a CCT. So the, the job market becomes extremely wide for you if you have a CCT. Of course, in UK, there are lots of jobs, depending on the specialties. Like my specialty, respiratory medicine, we have literally job in every hospital. Uh, so getting a job is not a difficult. Getting a dream job is, of course, difficult, but getting any job is not difficult. So the journey has been long, is difficult, but the reason I'm sharing this is that any any of you who is starting the MRCV Part 1 journey will get an idea about what will happen to your career once you clear all these exams. So when I did MRCV Part 1, I didn't have too many, well, of course, uh, so that was 2011. We didn't have webinars like this. We didn't have courses like this. Uh, so I didn't have a real person talking to me about how we must be their career. So you just, just take a plunge, pass an exam, and just hope something will work out. But I'm giving you this idea that if you are planning on passing a multiple part one exam in 2024, then there are a lot of opportunities available to you, but always go in to part one exam with the mindset that you need to pass all your exams. So part one exam itself has no value. So don't see someone, if you have seen uh, Instagram reels and people are saying I passed, passed part one and my life has changed, nothing is going to happen. You need to have a mindset of clearing all the steps of the exam, only then you'll get the benefit of the MRCP diploma. Okay, so just to give you an idea about how our course structure runs. So you will have a lecture every week. We usually try to do it on Saturday, Sunday because most people are available. Uh, assuming many of you are working now. We do it in the evening, something around 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. And in every week we cover one broad topic and we combine with a shorter topic as well, like Next week, I'm going to do respiratory medicine and which is a bigger topic, which have more questions. And then I've combined with geriatric medicine, which is a small topic. And there is a lot of overlap between geriatric and neurology. So I won't be spending a whole day on geriatric medicine. We combine the smaller topics with the bigger topic. And that's how our course runs. And throughout the week, you will have daily activity questions. These questions are available on your mobile app. So... We, you, you, these are MCQs. You can practice those MCQ every day. So there is usually like 10 questions a day. It goes up on your MCQ, uh, on your MCQ bank, on your app. And this is something that you can solve in your own time. And uh, if you have any doubts, we have a WhatsApp group where you can post, post your questions. If you want to discuss the questions in detail, use all these live stations to ask those questions. So these are these are uh, group sessions, but uh, we we have enough time to discuss your doubts, your questions. So always use the live session to discuss your questions. But feel free to use the WhatsApp group if you have some burning questions. So that's how we run um, the course and we covered that whole syllabus. Uh, okay, now I will take... July 23. So the picture, so those statistics, I think, the schedules, you'll be given the schedules. So this is an, just an example one. If this is what you mean. So this is just an example from the old courses. Uh, you'll be given a schedule for your particular course. If that's what you mean. Live sessions are two hours. We usually keep, uh, if there is a lot of discussion, sometimes it can go a bit longer. Uh, but 
we tend to do MCQ. The live sessions are designed in a way that you do MCQs. So we we discuss MCQs and we discuss the topic. So they in the live session we actually practice MCQs. So you don't go to each and every topic, uh, like because it becomes boring if we let's say if I'm going to teach you respiratory medicine in two hour, uh, just just the topics, then it's going to be very very boring for you and it doesn't help you answer questions because this is an MCQ exam. You need to be very very smart about how you study. So we do retrospective discussion in the live sessions. And again, I always promote that, or I always encourage that, use this live sessions to answer your doubts. If you have questions, feel free to shout out during the session and we can discuss the topics. Uh, and we always focus on the high yield topics because the way the exam runs is, there will be some questions which are completely new in, in the part one exam that nobody knows that's not available in any question bank out in the market. So you can't do anything about those questions. So the best strategy is you need to be 100% certain about answering the repeat questions. So as long as you are answering the repeat questions around, let's say, 75-80% of those, there is a very high chance that, that you'll pass the exam. So you can't do anything about the completely new questions, which will be like five to ten percent. But focus on the eighty percent repeat questions or repeat topics where you need to score most of your marks. So that's why we discuss more and more questions during the stations. Of course, you have the daily activities to practice question as well. Okay. All right. Yeah. Feel free to drop any questions in the chat box. If not, you'll have the IT uh, orientation now. Okay. So we have a six weeks course as well as a three months course. Uh, in the six weeks course, of course, as you can imagine, you won't be getting enough time for each and every topic. So it's more of a rapid revision. So somebody who's already studied the whole syllabus, if they want a rapid review, that's the six weeks course is useful for them. But uh, in the three months course, we actually get enough time to cover all the important topics. And of course, because if you can do, you will get, so, around six extra live sessions in a three months course. Whereas in a six weeks course, the number of live sessions will be uh, less than six because one every week. So we don't double up on the live session. The number of live sessions remains once a week. So yeah, so if somebody is already well prepared or somebody uh, is quite confident that they have done all their revision well, and they just need a bit of brushing up, then six weeks course is applicable for them. But if somebody has never taken the exam before, never studied for the exam before, then three months is the um, minimum one. Rapid revision of MCQs. Rapid revision of MCQs. I'm not sure what you mean. Is it, are you asking about the course? So six weeks is a rapid revision because in six weeks, you can't cover each and every topic. Uh, the MCQ bank will be provided. So if all our course library materials will be provided in six weeks course, so you will get everything there. And yes, there are MCQs. If you want to practice, you can practice them. Uh, but the lecture sessions, the two hour 
weekly lecture sessions, they are not going to be more for a six weeks course because the lecture sessions are once a week. So in six weeks, you only get around six lecture session, not more than that. After plab one, how many months? Plab one part one is completely different. The, the question standards are different. <laughs> so in plab one, it's not just medicine, isn't it? You have everything else, your pediatrics, surgery, everything. <laughs> so for part one, you need at least three to six months. Doing plan one is not going to help you for part one exam. So you need the full uh, preparation. I've done your MCQs already, then you can go for a rapid course. Yes, six weeks course is possible. Imagining you have already done your past test question bank once, you have studied it already. Then yeah, you can, in that case, you can go for six weeks, that's fine. But if you want to learn about the whole topic, because I showed you the, the list of the syllabus, if you need the complete revision, then you can only do that in three months course. So I will open up the syllabus for the part one exam. It's uh, quite an extensive one. And basic sciences constitute a uh, quite a bit. So clinical sciences is 25 questions. So that's a lot of questions. And this is the maximum number of questions on any single specialty. So this is something is only applicable for part one exam. You don't have clinical sciences in part two exam. So again, lab exam might help a little bit for the clinical sciences. But all of the other ones, cardiology, clinical farm, uh, there might be a little bit of overlap, but it doesn't help. Uh, if you have done part one, lab one, then it, it doesn't really help you for part one exam. The other difference is the question patterns are different. In lab, is things are very straightforward, knowledge oriented. In part one exam, you will get like a one page question which you have to read and it will take you like 10 minutes to read the question and understand everything. And then there is an answer that you have to choose. So everything is very clinically oriented, unlike PLAB exam. In PLAB, it's very much knowledge oriented. Clinical sciences are basic sciences. So everything from pharmacology, again, clinical pharmacology has a separate uh, topic, but microbiology, a bit of anatomy, physiology, pathology, all those uh, first year, second year, MBBS subjects, they're combined into clinical sciences. So it's not that they will ask you all the uh, details about anatomy, which nerves, which muscles, not like that, but the question should be framed in a way which is applicable to clinical practice. So there will be a clinical uh, scenario, but they will test your knowledge of basic sciences, clinical sciences. Now, anybody who's done USMLE part one, or I don't think it's called part one, but the, the first step of USMLE, they have a similar thing, basic sciences. So if, if, you're, if you're prepared for USMLE, then this clinical sciences is quite helpful. It will help you, your USMLE preparation will help you for this, but not really the plan exam. Okay. Any any other questions? All right then. Uh, I'll pass on to our IT team so that they can explain you about the learning management system and the mobile app. Thank you for joining today and all the best for your upcoming MRCP exam.
Thank you so much. Hi all, myself Gina from IT department. I will introduce you how to get into this LMS platform. So our website is this lms.studymedic.com. Just Google that and get into this page by entering your mobile number and OTP. And after that, you can see the change button here. Just click on that. And from here, select your course, MRCP. Just click on this. And from here, MRCP part one. Then select this course library only. This uh, summary question bank and course are separate products. So just click on this course library. And from here, select your course. Three month April exam 2024. Just click on this library. So your daily class recordings will be available under this session recording session. And all these three will be uploaded once and by inform uh, will be informed in groups by the uh, corresponding team. And I will show one from each. So summaries will be like this. Whenever you get uh, a loading issue, just click on this uh, refresh button here so that this contents will load properly. Sometimes uh, it may be showing uh, like my notes only, just a page with the uh, title my notes. So that time just click on this uh, refresh button. So your summaries will be like this. Then go back. Again, select this and I will show questions. So just click on this SPA. So here, the SPA is of 50 questions. So choose the answer and click on this next button here. Likewise, until this 50 questions, choose your options and click on submit here also submit here you can see the solutions just click on that so the answers will be displayed like this this is for first question and click on next and you can see like this and you can exit the quiz Similarly, for videos, you can play the video here and here you can make it full screen and here you can uh, adjust the speed. So that's all about this IT session. I hope everyone is clear about this. Okay, thank you all. Thank you, Nina.